Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at how to calculate the specific heat, specific heat of a metal by uh, seeing what happens when you heat it up and drop it into water. So basically, in these calculations, you do with a scenario where you have an unknown metal and you identify it by heating it up, dropping it into the water, and then seeing how far the water's temperature rises. And from this, you can figure out the specific heat of the metal and identify it by looking at it against a chart, uh, list of specific heats, seeing as how every metal has a different specific heat. Um, this is the type of question that tends to cause the most confusion in this unit of chemistry. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go through the solution for this question, and then I'll give you a chance to pause the video and work out these two questions, and I'll display the fully worked out solutions at the end. So. To begin with, let's talk about that first question. Okay, how are you going to go about this and what are the theoretical underpinnings of this question? Well, to begin with, uh, this question, like so many others, is going to have a solution derived from what in this unit really is kind of the master equation. Q equals mc delta T, where Q is heat or energy, M is mass, C is specific heat, and delta T is the change in temperature. So, here's the issue. If we're trying to find the specific heat of the metal, and I'll put a little question mark here to emphasize that that's what we're trying to find, um, everything else in this equation needs to be for the metal. So the mass of the metal is right here, 15.4 grams. So 15.4 grams. Delta T for the metal, we can figure that one out. Delta T, the metal uh, started at 600 degrees. The metal's final temperature is the same as the water's final temperature. If you take red hot metal and put it into water, after a brief sizzle, they, they'll both wind up being at the same temperature. So the water ends up at 33.3 .3 degrees Celsius, so is the metal. You can reach in and grab it. Okay, so we're going to do it like this. 33.3 degrees minus 600 degrees Celsius, oops, degrees Celsius, will equal the change in temperature. The reason why I'm setting it up this way is because the metal's temperature went down from 600 to 33.3, .3, which means that's a negative delta T, because whenever the temperature drops, the number should be negative. So negative 566.7 degrees Celsius is the delta T. Okay, well, at any rate, what that leaves us with is a situation where, okay, we know this, we know this, we do not know this, and the thing is, Q is energy, which means there needs, if for this to be in here, we'd have to be given something about joules or calories or some other energy unit, and the, the, no such thing is given, which means unknown. Now, this scenario, it would be very difficult to solve, and in fact, there'd be a range of possible answers that could give, that can make this work. So really, we can't solve this if we don't know Q and if we don't know C. However, we can take advantage of a little trick here. We don't know Q, and we're trying to find C. So since we don't know the energy, we can say this. We can say that uh, in your container full of water, which I'll leave in the color coded here, there's a heat transfer going on. So there's the water. And then you drop in your coin or whatever piece of metal you like. And the thing is, we're going to say that all of the heat lost by that metal is gained by the water. Or all energy lost by metal is gained by water. This is going to allow us to get around this problem. So what this comes down to is basically saying that Q for water is equal to Q for metal. Oops. Okay, W for water. In fact, I'll write that out. And then I'll abbreviate it later. Plus Q for metal. But it's not quite equal in the sense of if the metal is cooling down it's because it's losing energy well the water is warming up because it's gaining energy 
So whenever something gains energy, it's positive. Whenever something loses energy, it has to have a negative sign. So there has to be this negative sign here. So Q of water equals negative Q of metal. But wait, Q equals MC delta T. Well, great. So we can say that if Q equals negative Q, then MC delta T equals negative MC delta T. So we're going to say Q of water is equal to MC delta T of water. And that, if this is true, then Q of metal, Q is MC delta T for metal. And just as there's this negative sign here, I'll put this negative sign here. Okay, so Q for water equals negative Q for metal, or MC delta T for water equals negative MC delta T for metal. Because this negative sign is left over from here to show that metal is losing energy, water is gaining it. That's why it's positive. Okay, so that being said, what can I do with the next? Well, again, I need to find this. So let's get this set. Now I've got two M's, two C. We don't want to get confused here. So I'm going to put M with a little W to mean mass of water. C with a little W. Specific heat of water, delta T with a W for change in temperature of water equals negative mass of metal. Specific heat of metal, delta T of metal. That will allow me to not get confused when I do this. Now, again, I'm trying to solve for this specific heat of metal. So I need to do an algebraic rearrangement. I need this by itself. I need to get rid of these. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by all this other stuff. So divided by negative mass of metal delta T of metal. And what I do to one side, I've got to do to the other side as well. Divided by negative mass of metal delta T of metal. Which means that these then cancel out. And your final um, way of writing it would be, and I'll just put this negative sign here for clarity, mass of water, C of water, delta T of water. Is this in view for you? Ah, here we go. Okay, there you go. Put the negative sign. I just moved the negative sign over here for clarity. So there's mass of water, specific heat of water, delta T of water, and then on bottom, mass of metal, delta T of metal. And all that would be equal to the specific heat of metal. This is what I'm trying to find, and this is all the numbers and such that's going to allow me to find it. All right? Now, let's go figure out what these are. Mass of water, right here. Specific heat of water. Um, that'll be given to you on the test. I suppose you could look it up in your book. You can look it up on Google anywhere. Uh, the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per, let's make that clearly J, joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, uh, let's see. Delta T of water, I need to calculate that. Mass of metal, right here, delta T of metal, calculated it over here. But just for clarity, change in temperature for metal is... Uh, 33.3 degrees Celsius, that's the final temperature, minus 600 degrees Celsius, the initial temperature, and that's negative 566.7 degrees Celsius. That's the delta T for metal, and the delta T for water is going to be positive because the water's temperature went up from 25.5 to 33.3, so 33.3 degrees Celsius minus 25.5. How did I know to do it in this order? Well, I know the temperature went up, so it needs to be positive, and this will give me a positive number. Okay, let's see, what is that? 33.3 uh, minus 25.5. Uh, positive 7.8 degrees Celsius temperature change for the water. Great, so that means I'm ready to plug in these numbers. So let's do that. So I'll just do it over here. The negative sign and then the whole expression. So mass of water is 120.0 grams. Specific heat of water is... 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Delta T for water is 7.8 degrees Celsius. That's the whole top part. See, bottom part, need mass of metal and delta T of metal. So mass of metal is 15.4 grams. And then change in temperature for the metal, calculate it up here, negative 566.7 degrees Celsius. 
And by the way, you may notice this negative sign is going to cancel with this other negative sign. You're going to get a positive answer here. So uh, let's see what this comes out to. And to avoid errors from order of operations, I'm going to do this first and I'll do this one on bottom second. So 120 times 4.184 times 7.8 equals that divided by, and in parentheses to avoid errors, 15.4 times negative uh, 566.7. And uh, all right, that's the number. And then of course, there's this negative sign in front of everything. So let's do negative sign of everything. That's your final answer, a positive answer. So let's see, ne or answer is 0.448738768, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now that I'm done, I can look at significant figures with, uh, let's see, three sig figs, four sig figs, four, and we're not going to worry about the sig figs there. So uh, what that means is we're going to call it three significant figures, which means 0 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius. That is our calculated specific heat. And looking that up on the table, which is in your textbook, um, depending on which edition you might have, a uh, current one that we're using at, this, at the time of the making of this video, it's on page, uh, oh, let's see, what is it? Page 329. Uh, the one closest to this is iron, so we're going to identify it as iron. Even though it didn't ask the identity of the metal, I just thought I'd point that out. And that's generally how you do it. If it does ask you to identify the metal, it, you then have to look this up on a chart in your textbook or wherever and uh, identify what it is. Now, that being said, let's box this answer. Okay, now that is one example question. Now let's go back to these other ones, okay? What I'd like you, the viewer, to do, not only should you be able to go and rework out this question I showed you, but you should be able to solve these too. Pause the video now, and uh, I'll then put up the answers to these questions. And all right, I'll assume you've paused and worked these out. Here, let me put these up so that you can compare what you have to these. So first, this one right here, a somewhat shortened and condensed version of what I did in the previous one, but it is nonetheless exactly the same process where based on Q equals MC delta T, I do the same Q of water equals negative Q of metal, which is MC delta T for water equals negative MC delta T for metal. Rearrange in the exact same way with the negative sign here up front. Calculate the delta T's. Plug the numbers in. And solve. And you look this up. It it's matches with aluminum. And then, uh, let's see, the other one. This question. Here's the answer to the other question. We're once again, same process where... Q equals MC delta T, Q of water equals negative Q of metal, MC delta T for water equals negative MC delta T for metal. So we write that out this way, this becomes this, this becomes this. We arrange to solve for specific heat, figure out delta T's, plug in the numbers, solve, and it's a number that matches with the specific heat for gold. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Happy studying.